that, why don't you take and measure now what the distance from here is to the table. Now, you might want to take and get on the other side so you can actually put the tape measure uh, uh, next to it because, and I'm going to hold this against this surface. I got 33. 33.0? All right. Now, let's take and move it up. Oh, let's see. I'm just guessing at what five degrees up would be, but that's probably, let's go that much. All right. Now, measure it again. Twenty-eight point four. All right, so twenty-eight point four, and what's the what's the distance then? Four point six centimeters. All right, four point six centimeters. Now, how far did this move? Well, let's take and measure. It moved this much. So why don't you measure what that distance is? All right, 7.1. Now, is this, what is this? Is this the input or the output? That's the output. All right, so 7.1 is the output distance moved, mm -hmm. and 4.28 is the input distance moved. Mm -hmm. All right, you take the input distance and you divide it by the output distance, and that gives you the IMA. IMA. All right, now here, I'll get it for you. It's, it's 4.8, is it? It's 4.6. Oh, 4.6 divided by 7. Point what? One. One. Okay. That gives a, an ideal mechanical Point advantage six, of 0. 0.65, or actually, okay. if we round it off to two places, that's about as much as we got. So 0. 0.65. All right, now let's see what the actual mechanical is. Do you, do you see how that works? Mm -hmm. So how we is that different from what we were doing? Well, you got 0.067. Yeah. See, that's 10 times smaller. But didn't we measure the same? I don't know. Like you, you may have. Maybe it was just, a, just, maybe it was just a calculational yeah, that's, that's error. Because our measure, we did it we did real similar. Way. It wasn't actually, ours probably wasn't quite as efficient, but we shouldn't have been that far off. I think yeah. ours was maybe just bad math somewhere okay. on the Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to take and, and put enough weights on here so that this will, once you start this up, it'll move through this distance at a constant speed. You see? And then take the ratio of this output force, which would correspond to 500 grams, to whatever this is. Now you can get a rough idea what it's going to be. You know that the minimum it's going to be, if it's uh, 6.48 and it's 500 grams, um, it's going to have to be at least 772 grams if it was 100% efficient. Well, it looks like you've got 850 grams on there right now. So it's, it's not going to be 100% efficient. Okay. So now what you need to do is, is add weights until you can get that to move at a constant speed. The idea of a constant speed is the only time you know what the, the force is here well, you want the force in this string to be uh, just enough to lift this. If this is moving at a constant speed, then there's no extra force. Okay. If it's not moving, then there's not enough force. But you want it to move at a constant speed through a distance of about that much. Does that make sense? Well, let's see. Let's, let's feel it and see. Okay, that, let's try, a, have you tried something a little heavier than that? Try a 50 on there and see if that's going to be too much. See, bracket the thing in if you can. Uh, see, okay, now you're 20. It, it, you see, it's just, you might try putting on, what you want to do is you want to teach, ah, oh, look at that. Very close. You want to teach your kids some bracketing principles so that they can take and zero in on where they should start putting the fine so masses use on. Hand to get an well, yeah, to get an idea how much more is it going to take at this point, you know? And then the, the point is is that the, the tiebreakers are based on time. How quickly they can do it. So it's it's you know, if you can bracket it in. All right. See how that works for you. 
No, but look, look at that. You're, you're, you're lifting a kilogram of material with just maybe a tad more than 50 grams. That's pretty neat. Pick some small point that you can see on there, and you don't have to use a... You got that? Okay, now keep, remember that, and what we want to do now is we want to measure what this distance is simultaneously. What do you get there? 600 and... No, 60, okay, if you're going to use millimeters. Yeah, since we're in the same unit. Be 648. 648. Okay. Now let's take and run this all the way down to the floor, and let's just set a weight on it to keep it down there. All right. Now we know how far the input force moved. This is 105. From 61. From and, and the other measurement would be zero <laughs> because it's setting down at the reference point. Well, when we measured this distance, we me it went from this point down to to here, which is zero. And so I was telling her on her on her table there, the, the measurements that corresponds to this one for the input is zero. You see, so now you subtract the um, the two measurements from each other, these two and these two, and you know what the distances are that were moved. I would strongly suggest that you try to take and move away from the effort and resistance. I've had kids come up to me at the national tournament and say, "Can you tell me which is the effort and which is the uh, the uh, resistance?" You know, and I says, "I really can't." You know. This is the input, this is the output. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the point is, they have no idea what those things mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, then you got 10 okay. divided. So, well, we, we, got, we got up to 3.96 okay. calculated. Okay. That's pretty right. close. That's pretty good. Now, if you look at this, notice that there are four strings yeah, that are holding this up. Yeah. All right. I cannot tell you how many teams come into the national and tournament and go one, two, three, four, five, six, write down six and go on. Mm. And don't even because what? Anything. Their so teachers just, have been telling them, yeah. count the, the strings. 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 So we deliberately put extra strings yeah. in there so yeah. they have yeah. to determine yeah. which ones yeah. to count. But I tell my kids specifically, it's date, you gotta be very careful because you gotta determine which are supporting strands and which are not supporting strands. Okay, so now, three. let me ask you a question. Why can you count the strings? What is the justification for counting the strings? Each string gets one fourth Four. shorter as it lifts. Oh, that's confusing. Each one moves the same distance. No, and that's a quarter. They're a quarter of the distance this moves. Well, they're, no, no. They're, they're holding it up. Well, no, no. Look here. In order for this thing to move up by one centimeter, yeah, you got all right, we have to shorten this string by one centimeter, this one by one, this one by one, this one by one which means that four centimeters has to take and come out of the system. Okay, That's why you can count it. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, let me change this a little bit more. Now, can you count the strings? Yes. This is a single fix. I'll put a pulley out there. So let me get a pulley. Hang on just a minute. Just changing no, direction. Because now, now can I count the strings? Yeah. Uh, now the distance is not the same. No, it sure is. No, it isn't. Oh, this this is a fixed pulley. Now, now let me there. ask you a question. The force yeah. that this string exerts is in this direction. What's so the direction that this thing moves? This direction. So this distance no longer represents all the distance that the output force moves. Right, right. So and in fact, it. in order to get yeah. this thing to come up a centimeter, right. you have to shorten this one a centimeter, this one a centimeter, this one a centimeter, and this one one and a third centimeters in order to get the vertical component. Right. Mm -hmm. So the only way you can count the strings is if the strings are parallel and in the direction of the output force. Right. So if you just if you pull this out and this yeah. thing was not yeah yeah if if I if I just yeah. took and put this on an inclined plane like this right. now now you got a whole different animal right yeah how about that yeah yeah 
the, the point I'm getting at is that there are so many of these rules of thumbs that teachers have learned and they don't have the slightest idea why they're true. What I want them to do is go back to the Simple. definitions, then once you have the definitions down, once you know what the advantages are, if you then are clever enough to figure out how the geometry of the machine relates to the input distance motion and the output distance motion, great. Like on that lever back there, that's the one to use that for because we know this, that when the lever goes up and down, we form similar triangles. This output distance was, was um, three millimeters. Three millimeters. This input distance was 30. So we um, that uh, that doesn't sound right. You say it's three millimeters to thirty millimeters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's that's only ten. That okay. That okay. Let me ask you a question. Why did you make such small measurements? I don't know. Because you see, your measuring errors are going to be very large with that size measurement. Really? If you move back just a little bit. What would here, you suggest here? Well, I'm just getting end. ready to do that. Okay. Take and why don't you, why don't you take and let's make a measurement like this. What what does that measure about? I don't know. I have to get down to eye level. About 65 or so, the bottom edge or top. It doesn't matter. Well, anyway, I'd make that measurement, and then I'd make this measurement. Using sun and use that vertical. What's that, what do you get there, maybe? A popsicle stick's a good idea. 7.8. OK. Then what I guess I'd do, once you get that, I'd take and I'd set this thing on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I know this has traveled that far. And I'd measure this. This has traveled that much. Now, the error in reading the ruler is going to be a much smaller percentage of the measurements that you're making. Uh, 12.5. So, 12.5. 4.5. Okay, and 4.5, you say? Sorry, at 8, right? Yeah. Oh, 7.9. Oh, okay. 4.9. And then this was approximately 65. You might want to measure that to make sure. Uh, but that's going to give you then like 14.1. Oh, that really threw it. 14.1. How did you calculate the AMA? Divided uh, the 500, 500 by okay. the 82. Okay, that's right. Yeah, by 82. So 6.1 is, is pretty good. Now our efficiency is going to change. What's your FIME? 14. 14.1. Okay, to get efficiency, you divide AMA by IMA. Right, right. right. So it would be 6.1 by 14.1 if those are correct. Oh, well, we well, we want here. this to be just about level, though. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Explain, <laughs> please. Okay, because the as this goes up, right. look, at, look at the angle. Right, okay. And as we go down, the angle changes. Right, angle so you want to go the same amount up and down. Up and down. Now, so we can, so it minimizes our error. Let's say 6.1 at the start. Do it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Done. Done. No, just okay. so we As soon as y'all get finished, um, I want to take and run through some of those problems with you to make sure that. Uh, We've now measured the IMA, the AMA, and the efficiency for each of the machines. Uh, now what we want to do is run through the uh, problems that the students will be asked to solve. I just want to make sure that all of you are, are familiar with the techniques. Um, I've written on the board the uh, definitions that we're using. The efficiency is equal to the work out divided by the work in, and that's also equal to the AMA divided by the IMA. The AMA, of course, is the actual mechanical advantage, which would be the force that comes out of the machine 
divided by the force that goes into the machine. If the AMA is 1, that means the force coming out is equal to the force going in. If it is greater than 1, it means that the force coming out is larger than the force going in. And if it is less than 1, it means the force coming out is smaller than the force going in. If this is less than 1, it means that this denominator is larger than this numerator. If it's greater than 1, the numerator is larger than the denominator. The IMA, of course, the same things are true there, but this has to do then with the distances that are moved by the input force divided by the distance moved by the output force. And these are distances that are in the direction of these forces. So if we have something that's angled at, with respect to a force, we can only use the mo motion in the direction of the force. All right, and the first question there under section 1A, it says, for the output force of this machine to lift a mass of 240 grams, the input force would be equal to the weight of a mass of how much? Any time, the, the first place we start in solving almost all of these problems is with the AMA because we're always interested in what the actual forces are usually. 